Hello friends, my name is Steve and welcome back to Page Chewing Comics and Manga. This is Pick of the Week, episode 29. Thank you for listening if you're new here, or if you're a returning listener, thank you for coming back and listening to me rant and rave about books. And my co-host Mike is still out of town, but he'll be back next week for issue 30, or episode 30, and we'll catch up on all the books he's been reading. It'll, I'm guessing it'll be a, a longer episode than normal. So if, if you're new here, uh, my name, so like I said, my name is Steve, and I'm getting back into the world of comics after a long hiatus. Every week I go to the local comic book shop, or look online if I can't find it there, and I come here to tell you about the books I picked up. I try to find number ones, or new arcs, something new for me to jump into, and I'm finding it harder and harder to get into superhero books because of all the continuity, which I'll get into here in a second. <laughs> so... Let's get into it. The first book I want to talk about is Dead X-Men 1. This is by Steve Fox, uh, Jonas Schreff, and Bernard Chang. So I was a big X-Men reader when I was young. I I had a, for those of you who remember, when they would ship books to you every week or every month or whatever, I had a subscription. They would ship books to you. They always came damaged. The mailman or the mail person would stuff them in the mailbox and you'd get them out and they'd be, they'd be beat up. But back in the day, I just didn't care. I just wanted to read. I had a, a subscription to X-Men Classic back then, and I read all the Claremont books that way. That's how I absorbed all the X-Men goodness, and I was a big fan of Wolverine back in the day. So when I see an X-Men title, I always have that nostalgia factor of the, that classic team, you know, those kind of those storylines. I, I have this this nostalgia for those books. So anytime I see an X-Men book, I get a little tug of nostalgia. I don't always try them out because I worry that I just won't know what the hell is going on. This week I saw Dead X-Men 1 on the shelf and I just picked it up. I thought it's a number one. I'll get into it. Maybe it's something I can, I can sink my teeth into. Maybe I'll, you know, maybe it'll be a, a hit for me. So sat down to read it. And all the characters, except for Jubilee, I believe, are all new to me. And for, for someone like me who's not really familiar with what's been happening in the world of comics or in, this, in, the, in the X-Men universe, I was hoping for a chance to get into what's been happening to, to kind of get my footing and get into the groove of this world, of this universe. Unfortunately... For this one, the continuity, just I, I just didn't know what was happening. They were talking about things that I just didn't know about. And I I get the the idea. I get the idea behind they want to reward the people who are reading their books all the time. They want to kind of, you know, them to, to know what's happening. And, and I get it. But for someone like me who has no idea what's been happening, it's hard for me to get into these books because I, I just don't know what's going on. And I've said this before, it's almost like going to a party and you don't know anyone there and they all have these inside jokes and they have these memories that they share and you just feel like a third wheel. You have no idea what's going on. That's the way I felt with Dead X-Men 1. I just, I just couldn't get into it. And then I just, it, unfortunately, this one wasn't for me. I, yeah, I, I just felt like I was a third wheel at a party and I just didn't know all the inside jokes. So unfortunately... X-Men 1 was a miss for me. Another one that I picked up this week was Batman and Robin Annual Number 1, or Annual. This is by Joshua Williamson and Howard Porter. This is, of course, by DC Comics. So in this one, Batman and Robin go on a road trip, and they find themselves being hunted in the small town, and they uncover the secrets of this little small town, which, you know, has its allure. I, I get the the road trip, and you find this really... This, this mystery in the small town and they're trying to figure out what's going on. They become the hunted and they have to solve this, this mystery and, and they uncover more. And I get it. I just think Batman for me, when you take him out of the city, out of, you know, out of the darkness and you, you give him, you know, him and Robin go for a, a, a drive in the country. I don't know. It just, it's something about Batman. He just belongs in a certain setting for me. Otherwise, he's just not as interesting. I guess Bruce Wayne has 
his own kind of thing happening. I guess he's not really Batman. He's Bruce Wayne with Robin going on this road trip. For me, I just, again, I, I, the, the good thing is it was a one shot. It was just a, a jump in and jump out as a contained story. So it was fine. Um, yeah, it was all right. I mean, it was, it was okay. Um, the, the, <laughs> my biggest takeaway from this one was the preview for the Joker story coming in Batman issue 142. That was, that was the most memorable thing in this one for me. The rest of it was pretty forgettable. It was a fine one shot. You know, it was okay. Um, you know, I, I tried to get an annual trying to, you know, find a place for me to jump into. I just, and you know, the art and everything were fine. I, I really liked the art. The art was fine. I just, yeah, it was okay. Um, so the next one is Tenement number eight. This is by Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, and Dave Stewart. This is by Image Comics. And there seems to be a there seems to be a pattern with the books in the Bone Orchard series in this universe that towards the end of the of the story, towards the end of the miniseries, it really ramps up and things start to happen pretty quickly. Things things really kick into gear. The last few issues was just people getting lost and bickering at each other. I kind of, I have faith in this creative team, so I, I knew that they were going to, something was going to happen. As usual, the art is fantastic. The panels, the layouts, all that's always top notch. It's always really, you know, it's always very well put together. This one, this one was a, was a fun issue for me because things start to happen. And the character that I've, <laughs> that I, I like to think of as Bill Cosby. He just looks like Bill Cosby to me. He makes a return and it's things start to happen. And this one actually ended or towards the end, ended, there were some surprises for me. So I'm, I'm back in to the series. I, I was going to read it anyway, but something with these, these types of stories. And I'll, I'll mention this again later is that when you, when you create more and more questions throughout the story and you, you don't give many answers, you just give more questions. It builds, the, it builds this anticipation of what's going on here. What's, what's happening. And if you don't deliver, then it's worse because it's, you build all this anticipation and mystery and it's fun to get all these different questions. It's fun to, to un unravel the, the mystery and have all these different threads hanging. But if you're not able to wrap them up in a satisfactory way, even in a mini, even in a mini, in a mini series, even if it is the larger born orchard universe, you want something just to, you want some, a little bit of closure. At least you want something to wrap up. You want to put a bow on it, at least maybe not totally, but you want something to, to, to feel like a completed story. So this one, I hope does that. And like I said, Jeff Lemire, this creative team, you can't really go wrong, but I'm a little bit worried about that one. But again, I am, I'm going to read it anyway. So it's always top notch, but I just hope. We have some kind of closure, some kind of, you know, solve something along the way. Uh, the next, the next one I want to talk about is Moon Man number one. This is by Scott um, Scully, Kyle Higgins, and this is the Kid Cudi book. And, you know, I, I picked, I admit I picked it up because I was curious what it was going to be about. And it's actually off to a good start. So the story basically is a man returns from uh, a moon a visit to the moon and there's during his trip or during the trip with him and the crew, there's seven minutes of time that they can account for. So when they return, they're under, observ they, they're under observation. They're being tested to making sure that they're okay before they release them into the public. It's a big public spectacle because it's, it, you know, of course everyone knows about it. So there's a lot of attention on this crew and it's not NASA or like a government entity. It's, it's a, it's a company. It's a corporation that somebody who's really wealthy was able to organize this trip to the moon so that then it, that increases the the mystery behind it because they can cover things up. Maybe not easier, I guess. The government does plenty of that, but they're kind of independent. They don't have a lot, a lot of people to answer to. They can act mysteriously and shady if they want to, and no one, you know, no one really knows. So it's off to a good start. I was I was a little bit surprised. I wasn't sure how this is gonna how this was gonna go, but I actually thought it was okay. The only thing I'm worried about 
is I've mentioned this before on the podcast that there's a lot, a lot of the antagonists now are becoming this, this like faceless corporation or corporations in general, evil CEOs, evil, evil billionaires that are pulling the strings and they have the money to do all these, all these really nefarious things. And it's become kind of, it's, there's too much of it. And I get the climate that we're in with, with all the different billionaires and in Mark Zuckerberg's and Elon Musk's of the world. And, you know, I, I get it. I get that that's the climate right now. That's kind of the in vogue thing to do with the stories like this, to have a, an evil, an evil billionaire, evil corporation pulling the strings. But I really hope that doesn't end up being the focus. I'm fine if it's part of the story, but I hope it doesn't end up being the focus of this series. But with all that said, I was encouraged. I like the artwork. I think the story has a lot of potential and I am on board with this one. I will continue to pick this one up and I'm excited to see where it goes. I hope it goes, hope it, I hope it doesn't go that, <laughs> that direction, but I have a feeling it's going to. So the next one I want to talk about that I read this week is um, Ribbon Queen number seven. This is of course by Garth Ennis and Jason Burroughs by AWA and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a simp for Jason Burroughs and Garth Ennis. I admit it. I love the, I love when they're together. They have just this, this, they just have this chemistry together. They just, I just love when they work together or independently for that matter. I just love their work. Now issue six, the last issue was a little bit of a bummer for me. I felt like it was a, a really big lull in the series They they built this, this momentum with the series. And I felt like issue six was a like hitting a brick wall. Cause I felt like we, we gained a lot of momentum and then issue six, just like hit some quick, some quicksand. We just kind of, everything slowed down. It just really killed the momentum. But number seven with this issue, with, with this issue, we're back on track. We're back to the, to the gore and the mystery and the horror and the story and the story, you know, becoming more and more clear. And yeah, I was, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised how quickly we got back on track and there's one more issue to go. I don't know how this will wrap up. I don't know exactly where it's going, but I'm excited to see where it goes. Garth Ennis, there's a lot of writers who have trouble finishing a series, who have trouble with endings, but Garth Garth Ennis isn't one of them. I think he's pretty good at wrapping up a story. Not everyone can do it. It's tough, but I have faith that he's, he's going to wrap this up. He's pretty solid with his endings. And of course with the, I say this every time I read the Ribbon Queen book and come and talk about it, but no one does body horror like Jason Burroughs does. So I'm I'm excited to see where this one goes. The next one is World Tree number seven. This is by James Tinian, Fernando Blanco, and Jordi Belair. This is by Image Comics. So I mentioned earlier when I talked about Tenement, about stories that build questions and questions and questions. And this is another one of those stories that keeps building questions with very little answers. And there's a trap you can fall into. If you, if you do that for too long, you can really create, you can back yourself into a corner. And like I said, you build that anticipation for the reader or for whoever's absorbing the material because you really want it to wrap up in a nice little bow. So it's almost like if you're going to do that, you better pull it off at the end because you can't keep giving us mystery and mystery and mystery and then fumble the ending to really knock it out of the park. This one, I'm, I'm a little bit confused with what's going on. I still don't really know, but I don't think, I don't think we're supposed to know yet. There's some characters and storylines that just don't interest me very much. I think it's the storyline that is supposed to be the main storyline that is the least interesting to me. So that's interesting how that works out. But all in all, I'm, inc- I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think this is a, a fun story. I hope it wraps up okay. I'm not sure how long it'll go for. I'm not. I think this is this is a mini series. I'm not sure how many issues we have to go, but I'm gonna hang on for this one. I think there's some 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 neat things we're playing with. I think there's some fun themes we're playing with. So I'm I'm hopeful this will wrap up. Either way, I think the the artwork is still still very good. Everything else is fine. The writing's fine. But just one storyline. Like I said, it's supposed to be the main storyline. Just doesn't do it for me. It also goes back to the to the Moon Man comment I made about corporations and how evil they are. I get it, but 
when you have every, when so many stories are wrapped around that, it's kind of, it's not as interesting. So surprisingly, I have a little bit of a surprise for a pick of the week this week, because I almost didn't pick this up. I saw it on the shelf. I was okay with issue one. I thought issue one was fine. I wasn't, I wasn't really sure where they were going with it. I wasn't really sure. Maybe I'll pick it up. It'll be a, if I feel like it, but I did pick up Charred Remains number two. This is by Anthony Cleveland, uh, Andrea M- uh, Muddy, and Taylor Esposito. This is by Mad Cave Studios. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations going into this one. I'll be honest. I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know where I was going, but I thought I'll give it a shot. You know, I'll give it another issue, see where it goes. And I was really pleasantly surprised. The art, the art and the colors, the colors especially make it feel like the pages are on fire. You can feel the heat. It almost makes you feel uncomfortable. It almost gives you a, like an impressive feeling when you're reading it, when you're looking at the art. The colors just make you feel like it's hot. So if, if that's the intention, they're doing a great job because it, it feels very bright. It feels like, like I said, it's on fire. And I, I'm not a fan of slashers, and I, I'm afraid they're going to go a slasher route with this. But, the, but this one, I think they're going more of a supernatural route. And one of the things I like the most about this book is a couple of characters who talk about their experiences, a couple of emergency responders talk about their history and how the things that they've seen haunt them and the the way that they they cope with those things. So that exploration into PTSD and, and experiencing those kind of traumas in the line of work that they're in really interested me. And I think that's something that the two characters were bonding over. And I thought that was, I thought that was really done well, really great character moments there that really built the characters up before. I didn't really know that much about them. Obviously you've just had one issue, but this one, I, I, I really felt like I connected with them and I thought it was really interesting to add that in and to, to focus, to give those characters a moment to, to kind of, kind of get into their heads and see what makes them tick or, or what they're struggling with. And I, it really put its hooks in me. It, it was this one and Moon Man, that where I was going back and forth with on which one would be my pick, but ultimately I, I settled on Charred Remains number two. Uh, yeah, I think the pacing was also great in this one. I think really nice pace. I'm I'm not sure. I, I really hope they don't go a slasher route, but I think they're going more of a super, supernatural in general route. And yeah, I think all the, char- the characters each had a moment that we can connect with them. And I'm a big character guy, so I Characters, if you have characters and you focus on characters and you, you make me care about them, you make me invested in them, I'm I'm a sucker. So this one did that for me and I am, uh, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm on board with this one now. I'm excited to see issue three. I was like sort of hesitant on issue two, but I'm really interested in issue three. So yeah, that one got me. And yeah, that was my pick of the week, surprisingly. And it wasn't, I didn't expect that at all. Really glad I gave it a chance. And that's the thing is, you know, you kind of go back and forth a little bit on these books and you, you, you try to fit in the ones you think you'll like and eliminate the ones you don't because, you know, all, all these books add up time and, and money too. Right. So you have to kind of be selective. At least I do with, with, uh, you know what I'm reading. Cause I'm reading lots of other things and I want to talk about different books on the podcast. So I pick up so many every week. But I try to be selective, and, and I want to come and talk about things I enjoy. So this one was a pleasant surprise. So Charter Remains number two. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see where it goes. So, yeah, that's it for this week. Um, you know, I, I've I've been a big fan of, of comic book podcasts for a long time. Uh, way back when I had this, uh, when I, I used to work nights, and no one, when no one was around, and I would, I would do things, a lot of independent things. I, I wasn't around a lot of people. I would go and do different tasks and be by myself. So I had headphones in all the time and I would always listen to different comic book podcasts. And those podcasts really kept me going. They kind of kept me company during these long, cold nights at times. So it's great to be able to do this now. It's always something I've wanted to do. So I just wanted to thank you, whoever you are out there for listening, because it's something I wanted to do. And I'm, I'm glad I finally did it because it's, I hope someone out there is listening. That's maybe in the same position that just, you know, kind of keep you company for a little bit. And uh, whether it's 
a group group of us talking about a book or reading or or Mike and I talking about our, our books of the week. I hope we can keep you company and I don't know, give you some kind of escape for a little while to just talk about about comic books or mangas or whatever. So it means a lot to me to be able to do this and for people to listen. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen and hopefully I can keep you company for a few minutes. So until next week, uh, yeah, we we'll hope, hope you're having a fantastic week. If you'd like to connect with me, the best place is on our forums at page doing.com. We have a blog on the front page and just click on visit our forums. If you're not already a member, uh, you can register for an account and I will approve your membership. If you're a person and not a bot and uh, come in and chat with us. We, we welcome anyone who wants to come and talk comic books with us or books or movies or have tons of stuff. So you can find me on, of course, this podcast. I also have a page chewing podcast that is devoted to, to literature, to books, uh, mostly fantasy, but also some nonfiction stuff. And also you can find me on film chewing where we're talking about movies and TVs, TVs, TV shows. Uh, we're doing a true detective uh, breakdown. We do uh, Cinephile Saturdays. We do a movie every week. So come in and chat with us. We'd love to love to talk to you. So with all that said, again, I hope you're having a great week. Thank you for listening and hope to talk to you very soon.